Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm going to show you how to make a two-color pull cue with a carbon fiber shaft. Now this is very similar to the red pull cue I've made before as far as the techniques I'm using to cast, the colors, and all that stuff. But with this one, I'm going to be using two separate colors instead of just the one single red color. I went with a carbon silver and an OEM black from KP Pigments and used some Total Boat Epoxy and used the same mold technique as I did on the red cue. The big difference here is during the two color pour, what you can't see at the other end of the mold is actually a wedge to hold the mold at an angle to cause the silver epoxy to build up more at one end just so when I poured it I could get more of a differential color along the uh, length of the butt section. I was really hoping that where the colors would meet it would kind of meld so I tried to blend them the best I could by pouring a little extra of each color up and down that seam where the two colors meet. I did not want a perfectly hard line. I wanted a really cool blended um, effect, I guess you would call it. So after the mold was filled, I put it in my pressure chamber. Now this is something I'm going to be doing a video on later on. This pressure chamber is a 4-inch PVC pressure chamber, and I've gotten a lot of questions about it. But it does a really good job to pressurize longer blanks like this that something like my Harbor Freight pressure chamber can't hold. I let the epoxy cure overnight in the chamber just to make sure that there were no issues as far as bubbles or anything like that down inside the epoxy. And after removing the mold and the blank from the chamber, I was really excited to get to turning this just because it looks like the colors are going to be really cool looking. It's pretty. It's so pretty. <laughs> but the first thing I need to do is to remove the ends of the mold. I designed these molds to be pretty much disposable. They are made out of quarter inch plywood and they're not designed to be reused. I designed them in mind of removing the blank as easily as possible. So the chop saw and a chisel do a really good job, especially when you cover the inside of each piece of the mold with packing tape. The blank release is pretty easy. The top side of the blank was just a little high, which is normal with this process, so I used the bandsaw to square up the blank and then mark the center with the corner to corner technique. And after that, one thing I really like to do is to remove the corners on a square blank. In my opinion, it makes turning to a rough cylinder much easier. You get much less tear out and shattering, especially with the epoxy. And if you're using carbide tools on these corners, it will cause some shattering of the epoxy on the lathe. And this is a really easy process just by using an angle with the bed of the bandsaw and just cutting off the corners. It's not very difficult at all and it's well worth the effort. After getting the blank mounted up on the lathe, it was time to start turning it into a rough cylinder. Now, I'll be honest, turning these epoxy blanks like this, especially the longer blanks on the lathe, just take a long time. This is not a process you can rush. And to be able to start building in things like the taper and install the joint pin, you really need this to be a really nice cylinder and not really be squared off. The reason I do this is I like to use a steady wrist to hold the blank while I install the joint pin and then turn the joint pin as the center. So that makes it much easier, but again, you have to get down to a nice uh, smooth cylinder down the length of the blank. I found it easiest to use a square carbide tool and move in a sideways fashion, super slow, just taking off small amounts at a time and working my way down the length of the blank before using some pretty heavy grit sandpaper to smooth it off. 
Installing the joint pin in this queue is just like on the red queue. I started off with smaller drill bits and worked my way up and then tapped the hole before epoxying the pin in place and letting it cure overnight. For this queue, I'm going to be installing a black linen joint collar. It's not going to be getting a butt collar or anything, so this is the only one we have to install this way. But I like to use a set of calipers and mark the length of the collar, and then have another caliper set to actually get the width or the diameter you need to install the collar over the end of the queue. And just take your time and slowly cut down to this depth. I like to cut a smaller cut down to almost the final depth. And then use that as a gauge to cut down the rest of the length of the joint collar cut. After that, there is a secondary smaller lip on these joint collars. So I use the calipers again to mark this distance. And then cut it down to its uh, final diameter needed to install the joint cap. I try to get this tendon to the size where the joint cap fits really snugly but has just a tiny bit of room as when I epoxy it in place I don't want to press out all the epoxy. I want lots of holding strength to add lots of strength to the joint of the cue. After getting the tenon cut to the proper size, I apply some black tenon epoxy. And this is just so that once the butt cap is in place, you won't see any noticeable seams just in case there are any. But with proper install, there really shouldn't be any visible. I let the epoxy cure overnight before coming out the next day and start to working on building the taper into the queue. Now this is actually where you're going to get that pull cue shape in the, to the butt where it's a little larger at the bottom and has a smooth conical taper up to the final size at the joint section that lines up with the outer diameter of the shaft. I also have a set of calipers set to the outside diameter of the shaft that will be for this cue. Just to make sure that I don't go too far at the joint section, I would rather have to sand a little extra material off as to remove too much accidentally. After getting the joint section cut down to a rough conical taper and a rough diameter, I went ahead and started shaping the butt of the cue. I didn't want to completely remove this excess at the end of the blank just because it made it easier to hold on to the blank while it was turning on the lathe. Another idea to help get your taper correct is to go certain distances down the length of the butt section and mark a different depth and cut it to that depth. But you have to be very careful with this as if you mark the wrong depth further down the queue, it will affect the overall shape. Take your time and cut slow on this stuff. The epoxy and the wood is not something that cuts super fast. And in the center of the cue, it will actually flex a little bit and bounce on your lathe tool if you're not watching what you're doing. So make really, really light cuts and don't rush anything. Once the taper was roughed into the blank, I went ahead and removed that excess material that you saw earlier and got prepared to install the weight bolt and the rubber bumper at the end of the queue. Now these steps are just like with the red pull queue of video. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it in the description. But it's pretty much just like installing the joint pin. The only difference is you're adding a much larger hole at a shallower depth to allow you to put in a press-in rubber bumper. And this is to stop the pool cue from hitting the ground at the pool hole or wherever you're playing it and damaging the end of the cue. This is also where you will get ready to install the weight bolt and this just makes it to where whoever has the cue can remove a little bit of weight out of the back and either add in a heavier weight bolt or leave the weight bolt out to adjust the weight to their liking. 
my camera died during the thread tapping process uh, for the weight bolt. If you're interested in that, go back and take a look at the red pull cue video, and it will explain it a little bit more in depth. With the weight bolt and the bumper installed, I started at 120 grit sandpaper and worked my way up to 1000 grit before using some star bond adhesives, thin CA glue to apply the final finish. I use a shop rag to spread the thin CA glue down the length of the queue. Now what this does is applies a super thin layer and you just apply multiple layers with activator being sprayed onto the CA glue between each layer. Once you build up enough layers, it allows you to sand down the top layers to a glass-like finish. When this thing was finished, it was absolutely beautiful and smooth. But I did go through this process about four or five times with the CA glue before I ever touched it with any oh, sandpaper or micro mesh. One thing to keep in mind is that the more layers of sea eagle you put on, the deeper finish you're going to have. It's going to have more of a deep wet look once you sand and polish it with more layers. But I also did not want to do too many as I really like this effect it has with the chatoyancy of the silver and the flicker of all the pearls in the pigments that was used for this cube. After all the coats were applied of CA glue, I started at 1500 grit and worked my way all the way to 12,000 grit micro mesh, wet sanding the entire queue with every pad. The reason you wet sand this is you do not want to add any scratches into the clear coat, so this helps to clear away any debris on your sanding pads. Once I was finished sanding, I used some E Ultra Shine Turner's Wax and polished the queue to a really high shine. Ooh. Shiny. Now this wax is kind of heat activated, so you want to turn your lathe up to a tad bit of a higher speed and apply a decently firm pressure. But be careful while you're doing this, as if the rag binds, it will pull it out of your hand or could put your hand into the lathe. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you like the cue. I am super happy with it. As you can see, this is a little bit of a raw outro just because I'm still here at the pool hall and I'm gonna play some more. I love to play. Um, this Go Custom shaft, this carbon fiber shaft works great. This is not a sponsored video by them. Um, I just thought people would wanna see it because it was a new shaft that I had never seen before. So getting to use one and play with it a little bit just opened my eyes to it. It's really low deflection and plays well. That being said, the Q build went really good. I am super, super happy with how the colors came out. As you can hear, everybody's getting loud in the background. But 
it was a lot of fun making this cube. The two color pour was awesome. The silver looks like smoke. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of the build down in the comments. Let me know what colors you think should uh, be on the next queue or if you'd like to see one a certain style or color or anything like that. As well as you can go read the article and maybe get some more in-depth ideas on how I did some of these processes at the website. I'll leave a link in the description. And also make sure you go follow me on Instagram and on Facebook. And I'll leave links in the description to that as well. So guys, I'm going to go play some more and practice. I need it right now. So we'll see you guys later. Bye.